Merci, Madame la Présidente Tinagli. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, uh, good afternoon, President Lagarde. Thank you very much for being here at this very important time for us. I want to start with a general comment. I, I think it's something that we can all agree on. I think that the ECB has been put into a very uh, difficult situation. It has to have, uh, ensure supervision and also monetary policy. And now, as well, it also has to manage an increase in inflation. Uh, in, in uh, w when we have deflation uh, t trends. So I understand that you're treating this very cautiously. And I also share your analysis with regard to the different types of inflation in the US and the EU level. But nonetheless, I do have a question on this point. If it, it is true that there it will be a re reduction of inflation in the future. That does not mean uh, that uh, American inflation won't continue, con continue if uh, the activity uh, continues in the US uh, or in the UK for different reasons. And so I, there is a risk of this continuation in uh, the US and the UK, for instance. Uh, and then uh, so irrespective of whether we think that's a, a good thing or not, uh, what will happen in Europe? Will we be able to keep low rates? And uh, I'd uh, go back to what uh, Luis Garricano said about uh, uh, the uh, gaps between the rates, because I think uh, that the increase in interest rates uh, is not only linked to the situation on our continent, but... Uh, uh, my question, my usual question on the mandate of the ECB uh, with regard uh, to energy prices, if it's not able to do anything in the short term, uh, would it be able to do that in the long term? And so I wanted to ask my usual question about uh, greening and the question about uh, uh, quotas for lateral costs. Will we get specific proposals on that? We see lots of things going in the right direction, but we are awaiting specific announcements. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much, Mrs. Laluc. Je vais vous répondre en anglais. I'll respond in English. Mais je vous remercie beaucoup. But I thank you for your question. I'm going to answer your second question first, actually, because I think that we have we have some uh, some number one progress, number two good news. So, as you know, our strategy review unanimously acknowledged that climate change was a, a, a factor that had to be taken into account, not only for monetary policy purposes, which is under review, and uh, and I hope we will have some. Uh, good conclusions um, coming soon, but that it also had an impact on uh, the risk to our balance sheets, which required that we could take into account disclosure by corporates, that we could take into account the transition path identified by corporates, and that banks would be certainly uh, expected and stress tested to make sure that they actually um, operate on that basis as well. Our um, determination was embodied in an action plan that was attached to our strategy review. And under the action plan, as you know, we tried to be very specific, disciplined, and identify what is done by when. And my, uh, I'm speaking from memory because I don't have my, my action plan in front of me, but from memory, uh, the impact that it will have on collateral in terms of assessment, possible haircuts, and uh, determination of the risk will be actually in the first quarter of 23. So the work is underway. Uh, some of it will, will be um, pretty much done in 22, but we set ourselves the first quarter of 23 to actually uh, apply that to uh, collaterals under the CSPP, but also under the, uh, the um, that's on the purchase of assets, but on the collateral as well. So it's on the two accounts that we will, we will apply the uh, climate change uh, consequences. On, you, um, on your first question, Give me maybe a few seconds once again to reaffirm the principle that we are not uh, at this, in the same situation as the United States. And while, of course, uh, U.S. inflation, U.S. interest rates, monetary policy do have spillover effects, and, and we know it and we can see it, uh, and, and we have to uh, cater for that. But we are not at all in the same situation in terms of, of inflation. When you look, for instance, at, the, uh, at core inflation, uh, 
the US is at 5.5%. You look at core inflation here in, in Europe, latest number in January was 2.3%. Uh, you look at one thing which is critically important to determine uh, whether monetary policy needs to act, and this is the second round effect uh, of inflation, whatever the sources of inflation uh, be. And second round effects are really uh, on the U.S. labor markets. Uh, when you look at the, percent, the, the, the ratio between uh, jobs, vacancies and unemployed people, it's above one. When you look at the same ratio here in Europe, it's way below one. Uh, when you look at the tensions on, on wages, it's at least 4% in the US. And here in the euro area, we, we are looking, we are scrutinizing, and we are told by the corporate survey, uh, that the corporate telephone survey that we conduct on a very broad basis, that employers actually see a reinforcement of wage uh, uh, increases and, and, and tension. But we're not, we are certainly not at the same point. And, uh, and we will be very attentive to that latter uh, factor uh, in the months to come. Thank you.